This tutorial will walk you through updating all of your server components for your reporter-based products on your server. These updates will include the iFile server, job scheduler, RB8, and RB Web8 if applicable. All of the updates should be performed on the RB8 server, so first go to that machine. What you'll want to do first is navigate to the OMTI directory on your server. Uh, so what I like to do is click the open folder here to launch Windows Explorer and navigate to the drive that stores the OMTI directory. And once you find it, double click at the OMTI folder. Before we begin, there's two things you should always do first. Always make sure you have everyone log out of RB8 before you start updating. And second, always make sure you run a backup of the RB8 database before you start updating. Now, to back up the database, what you'll want to do is go into the job scheduler folder and you'll want to launch the job scheduler manager. Once you're in here, go ahead and right click on backup database and select execute task. You'll receive a message that the backup database has started successfully. Go ahead and click OK and you can close the job scheduler. Now, what I like to do is I always like to double check that the backup did indeed run. So what I'll do is I'll go back and actually go into the RB8 folder and then into the backup folder and you'll see a listing of all your backups that have run previously. Now, we just ran this one. You can tell by the date and time it should be current up to the minute, in which case this one is. So I know the backup did run successfully. So now that we've run the backup, we are ready to begin updating the server components for RB8. So where we'll start first is we'll start with the iFile server. And you'll, what you want to do is in the iFile server folder, double click the iFile server update.exe. The splash screen for the update will appear and basically you're going to follow the prompts. Go ahead and start by clicking next. And here the updater will recognize a new version of the iFile server so again you're going to click next. <clears throat> A little prompt will come up that says the stop iFile server service and basically what it's going to do is just going to start, stop the service and restart it after the update completes so go ahead and click OK. The update will now run. It should only take a few seconds. And once it's done you'll get a successfully updated message. You can click close to exit. Okay, so iFile server is complete. Let's go back and now we'll go into job scheduler. And now we're going to execute the job scheduler update.exe inside the job scheduler folder. And basically this is just like updating the iFile server service. The splash screen will appear. Click next to start the update. The system will check for an update. In this case, you can see you already have the most recent version of the job scheduler on your system so just click close so there's no update to be performed on the job scheduler that may or may not happen depending on how often you update of course the longer you take in between updates then we might have uh, updates available for the iFile server in the job scheduler but if you're pretty uh, consistent with your updates there may not always be an update available for the iFile server or the job scheduler so keep that in mind so now we're ready to update RB8 so we'll double click into the RB8 folder and we're going to scroll down until we see the RB8 server update.exe. We're going to double click this. Splash screen appears. Click next. This basically will bring you to the SQL Server instance name and database name. These should be filled out. If you use the default SQL Server instance, you'll just use a period. If you use a named instance, you'll put period backslash and then the instance name. Go ahead and click next. Right now it's checking for an update. And here we go. So this is the process where it takes the longest. Um, the RB8 update is running at this time. It could take 5 to 15 minutes depending on when's the last time you actually ran the update. If there's a lot of updates to apply then of course it will take longer. And of course it does depend on your um, internet speed, your download speed as well. So of course the faster your download is, the faster the actual update will actually run. So we're going to let this run.
Okay, the RB8 server update has complete. You can click close to continue. So we'll go back now to the OMTI folder. Lastly, we'll update RB Web 8. Again, if you don't have RB Web 8, you're done. You don't have to do anything else. You can actually have all of the workstations log into RB8 now and uh, proceed to update the client. Uh, if you do have RB Web 8, go ahead and go into the RB, RB Web 8 folder. And we're going to execute the RB Web 8 update.exe. Flash screen appears. Click next to proceed. And the update will begin. So again, we'll kind of wait for this update to run and complete. Okay, the RB Web 8 is successfully updated as you can see. You can go ahead and click close and that'll wrap up the components updates on the RB8 server. You have successfully updated all of your components.